Now we jump forward to the first century. Understand, at this point, the Greek Empire was conquered, and the route by the Romans, and the route to the land of gold that Solomon ran and the Phoenicians uh, for him uh, and with him, uh, and even after him for the Greeks, uh, which continued from about 800 to 150 B.C. Those are the dates of the Greek Empire, roughly. Uh, that route's lost to the Romans. So there is a scramble in scholarship to get these descriptions of this route from the olden writers, works that are lost to us today, largely, but we have found some. And we're going to cover that in the next videos. But these directions, which are now maps, were written down by olden writers. Many even academics and scholars attempt to read and relate these maps from the first century, well, without even bothering to understand the mindset of the era, and especially not knowing this fact we just covered. The Greeks, which Tarshish was, hello, were entitled to these routes and had many ways of getting them, but the Romans, the Katim, had no connection. They didn't have a right to have these routes, and they didn't get them. Uh, and even when they tried to head far east, they uh, didn't have great experience. Well, they're not Phoenicians, uh, who are conservative sailors, not because they didn't go far distances, but because they were known for hugging the coast. They were known for... Uh, docking or, or anchoring at night and not trying to sail at night, so you hit things. Uh, they were known uh, for conservative practices, but that doesn't mean they didn't go far. I, I, I mean, can academia even think? It appears not on subjects like this. The Greek, em Greek Empire was no longer uh, going to Christ, fear for gold, but a number of Greeks put this down for the record. There you go. Now, we have this record, even still, yet academia ignores it. I don't hear anything. La, 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 la. I don't see that. I can't see that map right in front of my nose. No. Oh, oh, how do you read it? Well, evidently, they can't. So, some will say Phoenicians were conservative again, but that's not, that, that, is, that is ridiculous. They were conservative in their practices, but they went very far. Uh, they were sailing throughout the Mediterranean. Uh, there are accounts of them sailing all the way to the Americas. And there are accounts, most definitely in the Bible, where they went from the Red Sea port to Ophir and Tarshish in the Far East. Uh, but again, continued those routes even after Solomon's day. Though the Red Sea port, remember, we covered this, was broken up. That wasn't an option. So they weren't going through the Red Sea port. They were going around Africa, circumnavigating it. Now, how do we understand these maps? It's actually very easy. Uh, for instance, there are portions, and we'll explain this on maps, missing consistently in Southeast Asia. Why and where? We'll cover that. Yet there are portions there because... They have such massive significance historically. You know, like the land of gold and the land of silver, which appear on these maps. Uh, so they knew where it was. And they followed the directions as best they could to represent it in the first century. But this is a physical route they ran from the days of Solomon and then from 800 to 150 BC, basically in the time of the Greek Empire. Now, these are all reconstructions, of course. Maps don't survive that long. We should know that. And ancient maps are really written directions uh, that more modern folks have actually put on a mapping. Uh, some of these didn't actually draw a map. They just didn't. It's, it's just written down, and that's it. That's all they did. There's nothing wrong with that. Actually, that's far better. In this video, we're going to take you to their written directions, not just maps. Uh, because someone could pull this map and say, oh, well, see, this map doesn't have that there. Yeah, well, uh, go back and read the directions and see what they say. What did they find? What didn't they find? Where did they find it? The directions anchor everything to southeast of China. 
below the Tropic of Cancer. This is, this is not real difficult. We all know, or at least you should, that the Tropic of Cancer runs through South China. Duh, southeast of China. Pretty easy to find, right? And through Taiwan. So basically, it's the islands. The group of islands just south of Taiwan. I don't know what that could be. Could that be Africa? I mean, academic? No, no. That person can't think. That's all it is to it. Uh, so basically, there's room for more error than that propagandists like the British who are caught paying such on this very narrative. Since at least 1625, we've covered this with Samuel Purchase, uh, a modern academic or scholar such as Paul Wheatley, uh, who wrote The Golden Chair Sinesis, uh, will then completely misread and misunderstand. He's no cartographer, let's just be very clear. The guy can't read a map. He can't read directions. So you, you got to be able to read there, Paul, or don't write a book. You're wasting everybody's time. Keep your propaganda to yourself. So he completely misunderstood. Of course, he's taking Ptolemy, uh, who didn't even know what the Malay Peninsula was, and claims he says it was the Malay Peninsula. That's stupid. That's what that is. And then he never mapped it, okay, as he only goes as far as Burma in his directions. Duh. So, and then there are those who use Ptolemy principally as the primary source uh, of Southeast Asian geography, yet... <laughs> one could not be more inept as Ptolemy thought the Indian Ocean was enclosed after Burma. Hello? Uh, it's tens of thousands of islands that are non-existent on its map. The entire Pacific Ocean is gone. And you call that geography? Again, that's not academic. That's stupid. In other words, he not only is no expert on Southeast Asia at all, let's be clear, he didn't draw it. It's not there. Uh, what he did draw is way out of place, and he didn't know what it was. He just knows legends that's in that area, and that's really all he's showing. And don't beat up on the guy, okay? I mean, he, he goes back to before this era, even, so he just didn't know. But literally, uh, he was not a Greek sailor in terms of from Greece. Uh, he was an Egyptian, so uh, though he served for Greece, and he, he was Greek, or at least appointed by the Greeks, his family was, uh, he was not in the know. Sorry, but he wasn't. And that's very obvious, because again, his map ends at Burma and encloses the Indian Ocean. And we're going to cover that too in this video, and you'll see for yourself, we'll show you maps. So uh, he literally didn't even know Southeast Asia existed. He just knew legends of places from there, but he didn't place them anywhere near right. Now, we're also going to show you how Magellan corrected Ptolemy and academia. Well, they forget that Magellan, the explorer and expert, corrected that map for Southeast Asia, especially for the land of gold. Talk about dumb scholarship. And, you know, it, academia is, I mean, they have egg on their face for these kinds of thinkings. It's British propaganda is what it is, and that's what they're placating. They're not thinking for themselves, and they're not academic. They're just pawns for the British, and that's not very bright. For an Egyptian in his age, though, Ptolemy, this is not a surprise, uh, no need to beat up on him. Uh, but those scholars using that one map as the Bible for Southeast Asian geography of ancient times, well, they are the problem. They can't think, and they can't read, and they can't read a map. This is propaganda and misleading many, and that's what we're going to address in this video. But we're going to show you actual maps from the first century, uh, around abouts, that just blow this out of the water. Um, and yeah, we, we know we get ridiculed when we use these maps, but these maps are as credible as you get. Um, even Dionysius, the tourist, who uh, is ridiculed by the dumbest blogger in all of history, yet uh, Dionysius was a scholar. Duh. I mean, he is known for preserving the Greek mapping of the world for his day. That's a pretty big thing, an accolade, which academia gives him. Yet, of course, that blogger, you know, he's just trying to say, nah, -uh. he can't read 
Anyway, now it's not definitive. Uh, it is meant to place flags, the British propaganda, uh, all over the world. I mean, that's they don't actually prove anything. They don't actually say anything worth listening to. Uh, and their conclusions are lousy. Um, it's in, And they have been for centuries. This is not a new debate. Uh, the debate, however, was over and settled long before Spain was conquered. And then once Spain was conquered, the British narrative was installed, and Ophir, the land of gold, disappeared. Well, where did it go? Better yet, scholars, rabbis, pastors, pope, how do you forget where the land of gold and the Garden of Eden is? Can you be that dumb? And the reality is, the answer is yes for the whole paradigm. And then they go around today and say, oh, no, 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 that, that was proven wrong. That Was pro was it? Because we look back at history, we've never seen anybody prove it wrong. We've seen them ignore it, and that's what the British do. They ignore that the Philippines exist. They ignore that Magellan sailed. Uh, and found Ophir and Tarshish. They just ignore it. They don't address it. They don't actually have a position against it. They ignore it. And they take geography back a thousand years into, well, Stupidville. And then they live in Stupidville and create theories. Oh, I think it was. Who cares what you think you can't think? Okay, so there you have it. So let's cut right to it. Let's get right to the facts here. We already have uh, proven this out, really, uh, but these next few videos are really going to bring this home, and we're going to just, the last video is going to just put a nail in this coffin of stupid like you've never seen before. Uh, you know, I, I know, we use the word stupid. You, you do know that's in the Bible, right? Uh, it is. It's there uh, several times, and it's used appropriately, especially in rebuke of Pharisees, who the Messiah calls ignorant. He says they err, not knowing the scriptures. He called them ignorant. He's telling them, you can't read. You don't know the Bible. Okay, And this is what we're saying to academics about history, and especially scholars, who, when you read Bible dictionaries on this whole narrative, they are as dumb as it gets. You know, they play this etymological game. Oh, it sounds like. I mean, you might as well start a TV show because these scholars, they, they're just playing a game. They don't know how to find things. Um, it's fine to do that, but then you have to test it. It takes more than etymology. So we're going to take our time in this video. We're going to teach and explain the first century mapping mindset, no matter how long it takes, and we don't care. We're going to do it, and we're going to do it well. And those who wish to learn, will. What did their maps or directions show and not show in the first century? Well, let's go right to their words for one, and these are so super obvious. Many claiming to know what they're talking about on this topic have not done this, and they begin the whole process steeped in the wrong mindset. They haven't done their foundation uh, foundational research. They haven't built a foundation on anything solid, so they have no right to draw conclusions. And I'm talking about PhDs who can't read a map. It's really bad, and it makes them look foolish, but the reason is because they didn't bother to go back and set the foundation. Now, where is China on these maps? Is It is iconic in that era, and known in general in this day, even used as a marker. Uh, where was India? Uh, why was Indochina, the Malay Peninsula, and in some cases even Burma, missing from some of these maps? And how should we read them with this understanding? Because they were still mapping based on what they knew. It's not difficult. But again, we have reviewed so much, even whole books, which have no idea what they're talking about because they set a paradigm of a narrative of misunderstanding from the beginning, and they stay there the whole time. And everything they say, though it may sound smart, and they might actually be quoting, you know, this scholar or that scholar, they don't know what they're talking about. They have no foundation. Now, their compass is already off from the beginning. Uh, yes, from PhDs, much of the time. Let's be 
clear. Those with master's degrees, yes. How do we know better? Well, we just read it like it is and for what it says with no agenda. That's why we know better. Because this is just pure research, whereas they're trying to uh, placate a paradigm of ignorance, willing ignorance. And Second Peter nailed it. Chapter 3, read it. It's sad to see a discipline so messed up, and that is why we rebuke it. And we will continue to understand that. Someone needs to wake these folks up and love them because you don't love those who you will not rebuke when they're wrong. So the result, whether they know it or not, is they make themselves liars and they're teaching our kids. Ugh. Let the excursion begin. Let's begin with Erosthenes. And however you say that, if I said it wrong, big deal. We deal with many languages on this channel, and no, we don't speak them all uh, perfectly, and we're not even trying to. We're not going to spend uh, the time to do that. I know academia does, but that's just ignorant. They can go play their games. We're just going to get to the facts here. So, Erosthenes' mapping of the world in 194 BC or so. Uh, well, let's be clear. He didn't create a map he wrote directions, okay? That's what we have from him. You will find that true of the most ancient maps. So when you look it up and find a map, well, you will find someone's interpretation. And it's mapped out, uh, but originally it's just written directions. The same as we have done very credibly with Jubilees and First Enoch. Amazing that no one in all of academia or scholarship has ever mapped those journeys, I mean, it, it, that is called gross negligence. Two of the oldest books in all of history, even documented to 150 to 200 BC, and you have directions, just like you do with these guys, and no one bothers to map them. And by the way, they both show the land of above, the Garden of Eden, as the Philippines, as these maps do. Imagine that. Now, no one will disprove that because it is far too obvious especially, uh, well, both Enoch and Noah are so specific. and uh, But again, it, it requires someone to read it without an agenda who's just trying to test it and prove things out. Uh, we never set out to find the Garden of Eden in the Philippines uh, with these mappings. That, that wasn't where we were going. We just mapped what they say, and it turns out that's what they say. It just is. Now, Go read the first book of Enoch uh, and the book of Jubilees. Uh, you can find both at OphirInstitute.com, uh, free in ebook, uh, and see for yourself. The maps are in there. We charted them out. Do we all have m uh, much to uh, learn? Yes, of course, including us. We're learning too. But we also have a lot to unlearn in order to learn these things. See, because we're replacing junk theology and junk history, and there's a ton of it in academia today. Really pathetic. And we already know because even their records say that it is the victors that write the histories, uh, meaning it's propaganda. <laughs> Duh. I mean, and then, and then they, oh, I can't imagine such a conspiracy. Well, I mean, they told you. Can you read? They told you they write the history. Who said that? I mean, they were the conquerors. <laughs> Duh. So, in the case of Aristophanes, here's a credible mapping from Bunbury. His interpretation, of course, but well vetted and very accurate, uh, especially when you read his directions and we're going to read some the map is a reconstruction of written directions though clearly uh, here we find bunbury the cartographer uh, identifies exactly what is written in aristosthenes geography with an understanding of greek history as well specifically what they thought they're thinking in the first century see this guy got it now at least in that sense Far too many times we see attempts at such forgetting the Greek history and mindset, which is sad, and that will mislead every time. He is defining the eastern border of mainland Asia here, 
by these mountains that run all the way across the middle of Asia. He calls them the Taurus Mountains. Now, we know them by different names today. It's multiple ranges. But at that time, they just generally said that they were all the Taurus Mountains. No, not the Taurus up in Turkey. Duh. I mean, again, they, they map these. They tell you where they are. They tell you they begin uh, basically above India, uh, north of India, and, and go all the way over to China. So then he says something that is difficult to uh, misunderstand uh, or really understand until you do understand the first century mindset. That's the thing. Bunbury got it, and he got it right on his map. Many do not. He defines in his book, Asia ends, Aristosthenes himself does, Asia ends at the Eastern Sea. Okay, not, not a great revelation there, right? Where these mountains, the Taurus Mountains, terminate essentially. And that is between, he says, India and the Scythians, or the Sakai, who, by the way, inhabited all the way east to Mongolia, to the coast, basically, uh, of Eastern Asia, just north of China. Now, that's kind of weird because India and Scythia don't come together, right? Nope, nowhere near it. India and China don't come together at the coast either. Something's missing, right? Well, what's wrong with that? Nothing. This is a progressing view. They're learning. They're mapping along the way. The maps get better and better and better and better until 1492 when they nail it and they know exactly where things are. And even after that, the Americas come shortly after. They didn't know the Americas even at that point, but they knew, they knew Southeast Asia pretty well. They were getting it down. Not perfect yet, but they were getting it down very well. They definitely knew definitively where Christ, Sophia, and Argyre, Tarshish, were. Now he says beyond Bactria, which also says we are in the Far East, hello, no, we're in the Russian steppes in the other direction. So we know uh, it was certainly this isn't Turkey. So we know we're not in Scythia in the Russian steppes. Understand, the Scythians, they were the Russian steppes, not the Russian steppes skirt Russia all the way to the East Coast uh, by the China Sea, they all of it, uh, and much of that area uh, was conquered by Nephilim tribes or had Nephilim within, uh, which is why you see uh, the Great Wall of China, first called the Ramparts of Gog and Magog, oh, the two giants, the two Nephilim. Uh, hmm, imagine that. They were built. That wall was built to keep them out. <laughs> there you go. People wonder, why did they do that? That's why. Now, some confused the Scythians sprawled across the Russian steppes to Mongolia, and they forget that. Now, that mindset is consistent in these mappings in the first century. But why are India and Mongolia next to each other on this mapping in these directions? It's accurate to the directions. But it's wrong, of course. We know. Uh, we know these are not accurate. However, Mongolia would include Ceres, or China, in this mindset on this map, as you'll see from the others we're about to cover. Uh, very similar in the era. Uh, so there is no question what is happening here. Notice the point at the end of the Taurus Mountains, on the coast of what is China. That is China there. That is called, labeled, Tammuz. What's that? Tammuz is always the southern tip of China that sticks out into the sea, practically where the South China Sea begins. And there's islands southeast of that. They're called the Philippines. Not real hard, academia. How can you not get that? Now, this is an iconic positioning in the first century. The marker as to where we are. It's pretty easy. Notice on this map, there are two islands southeast of China. What are they? Well, they're not labeled by Aristosthenes. He doesn't mention them by name. And Bunbury does not either here for good reason. But 
We know exactly what they are, as you will see in this first century mindset. They are the famous Christ, the land of gold, Ophir in Hebrew, and Argyre, the land of silver, Tarshish in Hebrew, found southeast of China, specifically southeast of Tammuz, the South China Point, on the sea there. Do you notice what's out of place here? How scholars can view maps like this and not see the obvious paradigm escapes us, yet they will. They'll sit there and they'll try to try to find things and they'll forget. Uh, let's ask this question. Is India just south of China on the coastline? On the South China Sea? Uh, duh, that's not India. You know that. We all know that. Why don't academics know that? This is 200 BC. Is it a surprise to see this on an ancient map? No, it shouldn't be. And the Ganges River empties where? Well, into the South China Sea, according to this and other maps in this era. That's the mindset. It's wrong, but it's the mindset. So when you look at the map, you got to understand how they thought. If you don't, you'll never understand it. And most academics have no clue how to even read these. So do we trash the map because the ancients in the first century had lost knowledge of the Far East, lacking detail and omitting? Uh, they left off Indochina, basically from the Malay Peninsula up to China, even including Burma in some, uh, are just not there. They're missing. Again, that's no surprise. It shouldn't be. Does that mean ancient uh, geography previously did not know where Chrysler Ophir was? What nonsense. Yeah, someone actually tried to conclude that. That's illiterate. The land of gold was far too significant and mapped as early as 4000 BC by the prophet Enoch. 2500 BC by Noah. What do you think Solomon was doing? He was repeating Enoch's journey. What do you think Ophir and Tarshish were doing when they migrated to the ancient land of Havilah, the ancient land of Noah? How did they know where it was? They had the book of Enoch, which gives exact directions. Not real hard. And there is no disputing that. Watch answers in First Enoch. We prove that. Now, Enoch and Noah represent very accurately, with detail, no one can really dispute. No, this is not a Bible believer, uh, and he's trying to map the Far East with data that is known to him. That's all. That's what these represent, and nothing wrong with that. Now, it's a good thing he did because, well, this mapping then leads to the next maps, and they progress in understanding, and they get to know more and more and more and more, and mankind makes it further and further to the east, which was the progression until Columbus actually found it on a map. He knew where it was. He just didn't know that the Americas were in the way and that it was further than he uh, thought. And again, not just him, he's following maps that said so. But Magellan found it. He knew exactly. He was there for the Portuguese first. He scoured the area. He knew exactly where he wanted to come back to, and he went exactly there. So there's really nothing to discuss. The, the Greeks knew uh, they knew how to sail to Christ, so fear. They knew exactly where it was. But why would the Greeks share their location? for their land of gold so publicly while they're still going there. Hmm. Think about that. The answer's easy. They wouldn't broadcast that. Oh, hello, world. Here's where we go to get our gold. Oh, wait a minute. You're all going there too? Oh, I, I didn't mean for you to go. I, I was just letting you know because I didn't think anybody would follow the route. Duh. Think, academics. Now, how is that a surprise? Shouldn't be. Can they not reason basics? It seems not. And we've heard it all on this channel. Uh, thousands and thousands of comments. And we have answered challenges for six years. And we have obliterated every one of them. Now, 
For the time, this is a good map, and though it is missing much, it's okay. Uh, if you take the time to understand what is missing, and you'll see it principally on each of these. To then, as some illiterate scholars have, claim that those two islands over there off the coast, southeast of China, are, well, for one, oh, that's the Malay Peninsula! Uh, you mean right under Taiwan? Right under uh, the southeast China? I, 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 you mean the Malay Peninsula moved, it's now an island, and it's in the middle of the South China Sea? That's utterly stupid and not academic at all. I mean, they didn't think that out. And yet, book after book, scholar after scholar say the same dumb thing. They have no clue what they're talking about. They are unqualified. They are not experts. They can't even read because they've, they miss the mindset. Now, we'll get to Ptolemy, the uneducated, when it comes to Southeast Asia. He was an educated guy, definitely, but he was ignorant of Southeast Asia because it doesn't exist on his map. Get that. He's far worse than this map. Uh, this is a much improved version, and, you know, so uh, the same will prop up Ptolemy as the greatest ever, and he does put out a great map for much of the world, but not for Southeast Asia, because he doesn't know it, and he doesn't even draw it. It's not even there, principally. Uh, of the few places he does draw, he has way out of whack, uh, and he has the Indian Ocean enclosed, which uh, it kind of is not. There's just, you know, the largest ocean on Earth and tens of thousands of islands. That's all he missed. Uh, he was close, though, right? I mean, prop that up as the number one map for Southeast Asia. That's illiterate. For anyone to use him and claim they represent knowledge of Southeast Asia at that time, uh, give me a break. Now, yet they do. They definitely do. That's the largest mindset out there. And it's really dumb. Let's advance the, uh, to the Greek Pomponius Mila here in 43 AD. This is monumental. Uh, we see here Ceres, China, and India once again. Well, they run together on these mappings and in his directions, really. That's accurate to his directions, though it's not accurate. Well, now we all know this is the case, but we already, know, we already saw this is the mapping mindset of the first century era. See, uh, Indochina isn't there on the map. It's, it's just missing. Um, that should be no surprise. The Americas are also missing. They're, it's not there. The whole Pacific Ocean, not there, mostly, except for the South China Sea and East China Sea. But notice the detail, though, of basically to the north of Ceres, China. You have the peninsula associated with South Korea there. So we're starting to get some detail here. Good. Uh, Tabas, it's labeled. Tabas Mons, Tabas Mountains. Uh, then Ceres is China, period. That's indisputable. Uh, it's nothing else in history uh, in that area. Then in South China, there's that point again, labeled Tamos. Uh, and we know that is the iconic point to which Christ is just southeast of there, as we see over and over and over again. It's not in India. Duh. It's not a peninsula. Think. Now, you see in the South China Sea, Christ, labeled so, which is in the position of Luzon Island, Philippines. That is drawn accurately in that sense. Now, that's Christ and Ophir, indisputably, throughout history, so it fits. Uh, you skip a pace, and this skips too far, but that's also no surprise for first century mapping. But they really didn't have this area down completely geographically. But they're getting there. All the way to Argyre, just south of Christ. This is Mindanao, Philippines. How do we know? Well, because we don't look at just one map. And you'll see this consistently on all of them in that era from the Greeks. Now... We will get there in this video as well, but according to this map, both Christ and Argyre are off the coast of, oh, wait a minute, India? Uh, look again. You well know that's not 
actually India, right? I mean, we know India is what's not placed accurately on this map. They're southeast of China. Now, that's Indochina. They're across from uh, down to the Malay Peninsula, uh, which shows as a slight bump on the map, but geographically, these are not placed with 100% accuracy to the true geography of the area, nor should they be expected to be. Yes, there are those that ridicule these ancient maps because they're not perfect. Well, duh, neither is anyone who's learning, and these are good maps regardless. Now again, is that really a surprise in the first century? It shouldn't be. What is Mila doing uh, is the real question here. Well, what's he say he does? He says he is preserving and documenting the accounts of the Odin Greek writers. That's what he says, the ancients. In other words, they recorded exactly where Christ was because they went there to the Philippines, as it was their land of gold. Now, we have the end point, and we have the full mapping, uh, can we not draw the lines ourselves? Or did they have to do that for us too to show that they circumnavigated Africa in order to get from Greece to the Philippines? Duh. I mean, do you really need to do that? Oh, evidently we do, and we have, because we even have that history. We've shown you some of it, more coming in the next videos, that indisputably say they circumnavigated Africa in these ancient times, period. This discussion is going to be over in a couple of videos. There will be no debating. Now, in other words, they recorded exactly where Christ was because they went to Christ, the Philippines, as it was their land of gold. Now, we proved this out a little in the past two videos, but we have in this entire series of over 100 videos uh, over the last six years, uh, and in our book, The Search for King Solomon's Treasure, uh, you just, I mean, if you haven't reviewed that with the source book especially, uh, then there's much that you just don't, you just don't know. So don't try to debate unless you've reviewed it all, because you don't know our position. You don't even know what you're debating. Hmm. You won't do that on this channel. Our channel, our rules, quit wasting people's time. Don't be lazy. Do your research. Then, Go ahead and try to come at us. You won't at that point, because you'll know at that point you have no position. But the next one will bring this home, and in 800 BC, indeed. And again, we're going to get there. We're going to get there very soon. We're almost there. Don't worry. We ain't playing. Of course, you can also come up the other way around from Taprobane, right? Headed toward, you know, east. Uh, which is uh, basically, uh, what's that? Uh, well, it's, it's south of the two islands, right? Well, Taprobane uh, can be one of two things. Pigafetta describes Taprobane being Sumatra and others Sri Lanka. And you say, wait a minute, well, how can it be Sri Lanka and Sumatra? I mean, what is this confusion? We're going to explain that in a way that you'll get it. Uh, this is identified as such as well by others. And this confusion is also part of the first century mindset. And the reason is, is because they're the same place in the mindset. Understand that because part of the map is missing. So if you're in Taprobane, you could be in Sri Lanka or you could be in Sumatra. And it's the same place in this mindset because in between is missing. Understand that. Now, this is the first century mindset. Uh, Taprobane is the one next to Solis, the Sunda Isles, here on this mapping. Well, where's that? Well, that'd be Sumatra. So this is not mapping Taprobane as Sri Lanka. Yet it is at the same time. Why? Because the area is missing on the map, so the two are in the same place, and that's why they're confused. Are they really in the same place? Of course not. We know that now. They knew that, you know, in the coming centuries. They just didn't know that at that point when they were reconstructing this route. Did the ancient Greeks know that? Well, of course they did. They sailed right by it. Now, you go northeast from there and you are in, well, that's Mindanao, Philippines. It's really not that hard. Again, he wrote directions. He didn't create a map. Cartographers do that based 
on what he wrote. Uh, and so let's go to what he wrote. Let's see what he says. Here are the actual words of Pomponius Mila from his writing, translated to English, of course. Anyone can read this and should be able to understand it, especially someone calling themselves an academic. Uh, the academic source is there on screen. These are his writings in English translation, of course, because, well, that's what we speak. Uh, so he begins very clearly at Tamos. That's the southeast tip of China, as always. Uh, and what do we have there? Oh, it's an island, an isle, not a peninsula, called Christ. Duh, that's not Malaysia. That's not India. That's nowhere on the mainland, period. There's nothing to discuss there. Oh, and it's also not Saudi Arabia, Mesopotamia, Africa, uh, Spain, Britain, or any of the dunce scholarly nonsense that we see out there. Completely laughable assertions. Yet, even PhDs and doctors say, well, who cares what they say? Let's get to what they can prove and... Let's let them have it when they don't, because that's their job. Learn how to read a map, scholars. Now, we have addressed each of those shallow theories in this series already, and we've obliterated them in this series and in our book. Uh, so download it, read it, check it out for yourself. You'll see that's fact. If someone wants to scoff, ask them, okay, where is Ophir? Where is Christ then? Where is the Garden of Eden? Oh, you don't know, do you? No, because you've never proven it. Well, you have to do so in order to have a position. Because nuh-uh is not a position. Sorry, Pastor, but if you don't research this and just take whatever you're told in seminary, uh, you know, that's called ignorance. You're placating poor scholarship. And you're peddling propaganda, not the word. Those of you folks from Israel who try to peddle in the Philippines, stop your nonsense, grow up, and learn how to prove something for a change. You just say things, and because, well, we're from Israel, we know. No, you don't. And in fact, those, such as uh, Amir uh, Sarfati, who actually came out a year after we came out with Solomon's Gold series, and let us all know that, well, you know, we, Israel, the rabbis, we've always known that Ophir was the Philippines. Well, then tell us this, Mr. Amir. Why are you a liar then for so many years? Why have rabbis been lying to us and hiding the Philippines as Ophir? Because you've been lying. You know, you, you watch something like uh, Dr. Michael Rood, Mr. Santa Claus, and he's, he'll go on and on for 20 minutes about, you know, if here could be, it could be, it could be, it could be here, could be, 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 you know, it could be chipmunks, right? And, uh, but see, here's the problem. His conclusion? Nobody knows where Ophir is. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah, okay. Well, Santa, why don't you just keep that to yourself? Because you just created a video to say nothing whatsoever. And you know nothing on the topic. You are no scholar. You are no expert. Let's be clear. Neither is Mr. Amir there because he doesn't actually give anything to support the position. He just says, oh, we knew. We already knew. Yeah, because he knew Solomon's Gold series proved it and proved that rabbis have been lying to us all along. How about that? Now, how he can't see that that's the reality of what he says is amazing. But anyway, let's restore the word in ancient history which agree, and they do. This exercise leads to a deeper belief that the Bible is truth in history and geography and even science for that matter. You read the comments on this channel and you'll see people going deeper and deeper and deeper in relationship with him as a result of this whole uh, you know, uh, research progress because they can apply it to other topics and they're finding uh, in many cases we've been misled. So none of these dunderheads have ever disproven the Bible as such a source, by the way, ever. 
no one who says that, uh, you know, or or even the God Delusion book by Richard Dawkins, Dunderhead Dawkins, uh, you know, it, he, the guy is oblivious. He can't even put his facts together. He doesn't even know the Bible, yet he tries to represent it. That's about as stupid as you can be. So, none of those Dunderheads have ever proven, disproven the Bible. They dismiss it illiterately, but that ain't proof. Uh, that's just called scoffing. Uh, that's stupidity, really. Who cares what they dismiss? Let's see what they prove and don't bother to prove. And when they don't bother, let's just stop listening to them because they are impertinent scoffers that have nothing of value to say. Now, Yahuwah does not dismiss his word. So the land of gold is right off the coast, which will prove to be just a little southeast of China as mapped we showed you. Remember again, Tamos is that southeast tip of China where the Taurus Mountains terminate roughly. That again is the first century mapping mindset. Again, uh, Indochina is not there and India is not in that position. See, so that's not accurate. We know that, but some scholars can't seem to figure this out. Let's continue the words of Mila in 43 AD, just after the time of Messiah's death, resurrection, and ascension. There's the Philippines on maps as the land of gold. So that's Christ, and that's very easy to understand. It's the Philippines period, nothing to debate, and no one can win such, uh, nor have they. Uh, now let's go to Argar. This one's a little more misunderstood. That's the land of silver, which is Tarshish in Hebrew, the same region, again, as the Bible is clear, as Ophir. Ophir and Tarshish are in the same area. There's not one thousands of miles apart from the other. And any scholar who tries that, well, can't read. But this really shows that too. Yes, Mila gets a little confused uh, in details because he himself never went there. And frankly, he does an excellent job of preserving this knowledge, which is the point, and this is very valuable. It's understanding the first century mindset that is the challenge for many. When you do, all of this is easy to read and comprehend. And again, we're going to map this out in even better. When we're going to just nail this down in this video. Don't worry. Uh, let's read. And at Ganges, another called Argyre, again, silver or Tarshish uh, in Hebrew. Now, he gets more specific with details that nail this down. However, let's be clear, in the first century mindset, and understand there is no Isle of Silver next to the Ganges, period. Is he lying? No, he's in the wrong mindset. That's all. He's right. His geography is accurate when you understand what's missing in their mindset. That's all. The Ganges is not there. And there is no island of silver by the Ganges. So it's just mapped wrong. That's all. Because they're missing a section. It's never been found there. Nothing. So what's wrong? Well, nothing's wrong. What is wrong is those who do not understand the first century mapping mindset, where the Ganges River empties into the South China Sea. That's what you see on map after map. See, that's the problem here. It's the understanding of most scholars, or lack thereof, uh, not Mila, who does a great job. Mila, good. Scholars, mm, not so good when they do this. Yes, he says it's next to Ganges. He does say that, yes, but in the first century mindset. Again, that's the South China Sea in that mindset of that era. Yes, it's wrong, but again, not a surprise, and it does not undermine the data. Some try to throw maps out, every map, because they can't do the research to find out how the thinking progressed to that point and why it is what it is and what it really says. So, in other words, they can't read. Yes, it's wrong, but again, not a surprise. It does not undermine the data. So, you can't uh, just understand it unless you account for this discrepancy that the Ganges empties into the South China Sea, which we know does not, right? I mean, everybody knows the Ganges is in India. And India's not in the South China Sea, right? Okay, so something's 
awry, but not necessarily wrong in the sense of the mindset. Now, again, the Malay Peninsula doesn't exist in this mapping, really. There's a little bump there, but that's, that's not the Malay Peninsula. Come on. Neither does the whole of Indochina. It's just not there. Again, it's not a problem unless dunderheads get a hold of things like this and say, oh, well, there's India, so those, those islands are across from India, so that's what they have to be. No, you can't read. You have to read in context. That's where trash comes in, and academia is filled with it on this topic, as is Bible scholarship indeed. Now, they have greatly confused what this video will bring into full clarity. You'll see we're not done with this. Here's where history will nail this down in his details uh, do, but he doesn't even know the full geography of Southeast Asia. Again, not a surprise. He's preserving a route the Greeks used to take, but no longer do, and he has not taken. That's what we know. He tells you this represents the view, the, the actual route of the olden Greek writers, the ancients. He's making sure their works are not lost to us. And that is a good thing. And this route doesn't disappear in knowledge. He preserves it, though not perfect. Why in 43 AD? Well, it's a Phoenician and Greek route, and they are no longer in power and no longer running the route. Not that history says. The Romans are uh, in power, and they do not retain this. They do not deserve to, as they conquered Greece, so we shouldn't be surprised. They're not Tarshish's family. Greece is, get that, and Greece basically absorb the Phoenician sailing acumen. The Phoenicians and Greece are one and the same in their era. So, Mila's is talking about a route that the Greeks navigated. Yes, circumnavigating Africa for certain. That's what this is showing. This map documents that the Greeks circumnavigated Africa, period. Even if you don't agree that those islands are the Philippines, which you really can't disagree with it, but even if you do, you still have to conclude that the Greeks circumnavigated Africa. Done. I mean, there wasn't even a canal built until 200 BC. Hello? <laughs> they were running this route uh, from 800 to 150 BC. So, duh. Now, imagine that. Uh, the 43 AD mapping covers that whole era in fact. Now, that's evidence, and it's indisputable evidence, and again, it proves that they circumnavigated Africa. Indeed, successfully, they brought back gold from Christ. Now, he goes on to describe that not just in the mountains, get that, but the very soil of the one, Christ, or Greek for gold, Ophir in Hebrew, is gold. What, 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 what? Get that? The soil? What? I, that's not where we get gold from, is it? In ancient times? Yes, it is. They're called alluvial gold deposits, and though rare, they were not in the Philippines. The Philippines has tons of history that, that prove that it had alluvial gold deposits on the surface and just below the surface, not digging deep into the mountains as today. And that's why it fits this narrative as well, indisputably, and no one else does. Now, how would they have done so in 800 BC? I mean, they, they wouldn't have dug deep into the mountains. They would pan for gold in the streams and rivers, and they would get it from the surface and just below. And the Philippines has such legends. I mean, if you watch... Uh, gold at their fingertips in this series. Uh, not only do ancient Philippine legends concur with this, and they do, uh, but, oh, those are just legends, right? Oh, no, no, no. Valid, credible, absolute history uh, of gold sitting on or just beneath the ground right there in Pigafetta's journal in 1521 from Magellan's trip. Wow. He said these alluvial deposits in the Philippines still existed even as late as 1521, even after multiple gold rushes, even of uh, the, the Muslims, the, the, uh, the Greeks, uh, uh, you know, you go all the way back um, 
it, wow, Solomon, uh, it went through all of that, and still there was gold uh, just below the surface. I, it, wow. I mean, imagine that. You're know, the king of Butuan, we covered this uh, from Pigafetta's journal, gave a gold nugget the size of a chicken egg to Magellan. And he told him he got it from merely seeking in the ground, not digging deep into a mountain. He didn't say he had mining equipment. Oh, but where's the archaeology on that? Well, the gold is still there, duh. What other archaeology do you need for the land of gold, right? I mean, that is so unacademic, yet many academics try to level that. Oh, we need to find archaeology of what? You mean for the land of gold? You mean of gold, right? And the other resources listed in Solomon's account, they're all right there, right now, in great abundance in the Philippines. So the archaeology is there, yes. And we found it, uh, the, the, the gold pieces, very specific, uh, drawn in 1590 or so in the Boxer Codex. They're illustrated there. And then... We found those actual very rare pieces in Surigao, in the Surigao treasure in the Philippines, as a full circle proven, and that's archaeology. But there's no archaeology of the of gold in the Philippines. Of you know, <laughs> we had one guy say, uh, you know, in, in an interview we did in the U.S. says, well, well uh, you know, it's a shame they haven't found any archaeology of the Garden of Eden, huh? I mean, I, did you think about what you just asked? Archaeology of the Garden of Eden? What archaeology are you looking for? Uh, fruit? I mean, what are you looking for? You're not going to find archaeology. The Garden of Eden is not known for architecture. That's what he's saying. He's talking about great architecture. Who were the builders of great architecture? Cain, the evil, is the builder of cities. It's a Nephilim paradigm, not a biblical one. Adam never built a city. His generations didn't go around building cities up to Noah. That's not what they did. There's no record of that at all. It wasn't until after the flood that they start to do so, and then they call it a city, but cities would be rather small uh, in comparison to what we call a city today. So, Pigafetta also records an entire valley called Chipit. Not a mountain, a valley of gold, where the gold were as the hairs on the head, he writes documents in valid, credible history. One of the foremost historians in all of history. Wow. Now, again, that's Chupit outside of Butuan in Mindanao. And we've even heard a story as we travel around of a rice farmer uh, when uh, traveling, especially down in Mindanao uh, and Visayas, uh, that he had discovered that he had gold in the soil when he was digging out his uh, to plant rice. Wow. Uh, <laughs> it was just below the surface, even still this very day. A lot of it, in fact, it was a big find. So what other land has such? I mean, valid, scientific, historical, geographical fact, even known as Ophir and Tarshish in history for thousands of years in writing. No one. None of, none of the ones which make claims to be the land of gold, they fail, and in many ways, uh, that really makes them very laughable assertions. This is recorded history, folks, and the Philippines is the land of gold. It remains number two on all of Earth in gold deposits in the ground untapped to this very day. I know, that's uh, that, uh, I just made that up, right? Oh, no, I read it in Forbes magazine, the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and we went and got the Fraser Institute report, which says exactly that. That's where the data comes from. Uh, oh, who are they? They're the foremost experts on studying such minerals around the world. Uh, and you say, who cares? Right? I mean, the facts are the facts. So <laughs> they can say nah -uh all they want. Uh, the Philippines is a land of gold and silver, Christ and Argyre, because the Ganges, though it does not literally, but in Mila's mindset, the first century mindset, empties into the South China Sea, right where Mindanao is, really, and just northeast of Sumatra and the Sunda Islands, which you see on this 
map. It's Mindanao. That's Argyre. That's Tarshish. Now, again, we're going to show you other maps which make this very clear coming. Don't worry. Uh, this is really one of the first, uh, so it has a little less detail. But he writes with more detail than anyone considers. And this is why uh, those, uh, you know, cartographers who have laid this out this way, lay it out this way. They actually read. They can read. That's good. Now, this is what Milas says. So have ancient authors reported. Oh, what? Who are they? The ancient Greek scholars. Lost writings that we don't have today. He just told us he is preserving those ancient authors. Uh, and these works, again, lost today. Uh, many. But no matter, we still have their data right here. And actually, uh, you just wait a couple of videos from now. We're going to really turn this into a grand slam for certain, though we've already proven our position. But he goes on with even more detail, which makes this abundantly clear. Now, he'll continue in an academic mindset, which is why, thank you, Hua, uh, we ain't academics. Uh, because he'll offer a little question mark, not because the data leaves it, duh, but because he doesn't understand that an actual land of alluvial deposits most certainly did exist in his age and before, and even all the way up until 1521, in valid, credible history in the Philippines. And that's just fact. We've proven that. That in no way affects the data, nor makes the story somehow suspect, as it is proven true. And again, there are other sources that are saying the same thing. So it matters not what Mila believes or doesn't, because he's not even talking about his beliefs. He's talking about what the olden writers believe, what they said they did. Uh, the ancients took this course. Of course, he took the time to record this in detail. So obviously, well, he does believe the narrative. He's not questioning that they went there. That's not the question here. He just doesn't experience himself gold just lying on the ground. That part of it sounds like a fairy tale. And you know what? It does sound like a fairy tale. Even to us today, right? But it's not. It's proven in valid history. History he wouldn't know. And that's understandable. He's told it. He doesn't believe it. Just simply because he's never seen a land where gold's lying on the ground. But there was one period. Again, no surprise. Not sure how academics can't figure this kind of stuff out. He writes, the soil of the other is silver. And so it comes to pass of most likelihood that either the names of them are given them of the, the thing, the gold or the silver, or else the fable, the story, not fiction, he's not talking, he's not calling this fiction, uh, just the gold part, he doesn't understand that it's in the soil, uh, but it's no, it, but it's not fiction, it's fact, and we know that now. Uh, but again, he's not questioning the story, he's not questioning that they came back with gold, he's only questioning that it was in the, it's sitting on the ground and just below the surface, that's unbelievable to him, and you know what, rightfully so, but wrong proven wrong so is forged of their names so did they get the names for the resources or are they is it the story that they get the names you know it it really is very clear it's because of the resources and we know this because this is a very rare land that had alluvial gold and silver deposits as fact again we know whether mila ever knew or not this is no fairy tale this ancient land of gold, again recorded in the Bible, and silver, the Isles of Christ, Argyre, uh, uh, which is Ophir and Tarshish, are factually filled with alluvial gold deposits sitting on the ground or just below the surface as historical scientific fact done. So again, this matters not uh, what Mila believed on that particular point. And again, just as Herodotus, so he draws a question mark. Well, big deal. It doesn't mean that he threw out the whole story, or why would he record it? I mean, this does not cause him to question whether or not the Greeks went there. And that's how this is used by some academics, which is utterly stupid. 
Now, he mapped it because he clearly saw this as historical fact. And he's recording that, and he even tells you it's from the olden writers. There you go. Why bother otherwise unless he viewed it as history, which he did. He went to all of this trouble to preserve this route to the land of gold, whether the gold was found right on the surface or not. Doesn't matter. But again, we have the history on the other end, and this vets as truth, proving the Greeks circumnavigated Africa in very ancient times. One just needs to adjust their thinking into the first century mapping mindset where Indochina and the Malay Peninsula are missing from these maps. But it is very easy to adjust that and view uh, that in the right mindset. What's sad is we have to explain that, especially to scholars who can't read a map with comprehension and say really some of the dumbest things, proving their ignorance on the topic not in any sense actually debating what we found, because they can't. If we go back further in Mila's account here, he first identifies Tamas, and that's critical data, so we read in context, and that's pretty easy uh, to find, especially based on this description, but we know where Tamas is. It's the South uh, East China point. And that's, that's what matters here. But he tells you this, there is a foreland, so it's, it's in front of, it's on the, in the coastline on the east side uh, of Asia, uh, called Tamas. We know where it is again, and you see it on the map. Foreland because it's all the way east of the mainland of Asia which Mount Taurus raises. So again, just as Erastenes, Mount Taurus basically runs as a girdle across the middle of Asia to South China and terminates at Tamus. Whether that's 100% uh, exactly doesn't matter, but the point is this is the mindset of the ancients, and that's why you see those mountains drawn on maps in this era right through the center of Asia. Uh, are all of them called the Taurus Mountains today? No, but that was the mindset of the first century. Now, the southern point of China we showed you is Tamus. That's where it terminates, and that's where we are here. Uh, we know where that is. And now we have a fixed point uh, that even if other geography is messed up because of the, the mindset, we can get it. We can rectify it. And that's what scholars should be doing. They should learn how to rectify this stuff. They should learn how to reconcile this stuff. Bible scholars should learn how to reconcile Scripture, not sit there writing articles about how the Bible disagrees with itself. That stupidity, it never does. Let's continue. It is the angle of another part. Tamos is exactly an angle, a point where the... Uh, basically, the, the uh, Tamil sticks out uh, into the sea and angles inward, just as China does even. Uh, very real and very accurate, actually. Uh, we know where this point is, as the name remains, so not a surprise uh, that we can do that. And that's what you do when you're reconciling these things. You go for what you know you can indisputably anchor, and that we can in the beginning of the side toward, now that's exactly, that's South China, where the coast really curves inland and very easy to identify. Uh, and it just so happens to be where the Tropic of Cancer runs through as well as Taiwan, which cannot be this island either, uh, as it is southeast of China. So he defines this uh, so well uh, and, you know, there's really nothing to debate on it, yet scholars will ignore the detail uh, because, well, of course, it does not fit their paradigm uh, where they cover up where Ophir is because, see, it's their discipline who lost the land of gold. <laughs> and we're supposed to go to them and ask them if we found it? <laughs> now, that is a stupid paradigm we ain't playing along with. So, 
The entire south of the world, in fact, begins here at this point. Uh, the very north starts at what they call the Tropic of Cancer, and that's where we are here uh, as well. And that will be a defining point coming in other maps too. So they define it, and then they define it again, and they define it again, and they define it again. And then some still look at this map and say, duh, that, duh, no, that's not the Philippines. Well, you can't read a map. That's all. Now, here is Mila's confusion because of the first century mapping mindset. Uh, but when that is clarified, this is easy to understand. And you see it on others as well. Same thing. It's the same mindset, but again, easily reconciled. Doesn't take much thought to do so. There are the rivers of Ganges and Indus springing out of many heads in Ha Emotus, or the mountains, likely. That sounds uh, the Ha part, the, in Hebrew. So, and then he says, a mountain of India. So there you go. Uh, as soon as he comes in one channel, becometh of all rivers the greatest, and being in some place broader, where he runneth narrows. He is 10 miles over and disperses into seven coasts. Now, obviously, the Indus and the Ganges are not the largest rivers on earth. Okay, so does that mean that Pomponius Mila is a liar and, 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 and got to throw out everything that he said? Of course not. That would be dumb. That's no way to treat history. That's about, uh, that's about it, pretty much in description for those rivers. He, he gets them pretty good. Uh, but there is no island of silver there. So what's wrong? Why, why is that the case? I mean, it's just not there. So again, understand the first century mindset with Burma, Malay Peninsula, and Indochina missing. They're not there. This puts us in the Philippines, which in their mindset is right next to India. Now, we'll demonstrate this on a map. But let's keep reading first because he gives more clues here, which are so obvious. Now, let's nail this down. This is our mapping on a modern map where we demonstrate for you what is missing so we can see uh, how this reads and is understood in the first century mapping mindset. Mila had also mentioned that these islands are between Colis, the Malay Peninsula tip, and Tamus. That ain't India, and that ain't the Ganges. So his directions seem to be in conflict, but they're not because you have to understand the mindset. Now, that's the South China tip at the Tropic of Cancer all the way down to the Malay Peninsula. Across from there are these islands, both Christ and Argyre. The Ganges doesn't empty there. We know this, but there's where the misunderstanding comes in. It says the coast runs straight. So... He did get this piece of geography, but then it is misunderstood because the mindset is not understood. That is essentially Indochina, and the isles are east of that in the South China Sea. Both Christ and Argyre, both of them, and both are in the Philippines. Now, if you want to just say, well, I only believe Christ is there, that's fine. The land of gold is the Philippines. There you go. Done. The end. Proves the whole series. Already done, right? But really, we can prove this twice because the Isle of Silver is there too. Argyre Tarshish is there. No, it's not Spain. It's not Britain. Those are just laughable. Now, you can uh, see Tamus, uh, the South China Point, and actually location of the Ganges River uh, and these are in between is what it's showing because that's the first century mindset. No, it's not accurate, but you can't read this map without understanding it. The first close to Tamos, Luzon Island, Philippines. Done. The end. The second south of that, but within that area still north of the Malay Peninsula. Sorry, that's still the Philippines. Look at the orange here, though. This is the area missing from many first century maps. Burma, Malay Peninsula, Indochina, roughly. Now, when you apply this thinking, because you must to understand what the author actually means, because it's how he thought, and he wrote it, not you and not a modern scholar. 
you realize that actually the Philippines ends up right next to the Ganges because the orange area is cut out. It is non-existent on these maps. Again, that is not a problem if we understand the thinking. However, now we do. And now we understand how to read this map and all of them in this era. There you go. But Mila's not done because he says far more that, of course, academia then goes and ignores even further. And you just can't. So this is a good stopping point. We continue with more detail in the next video uh, from Mila because uh, it gives us even more and it makes it so clear. Uh, and others as well. Next, we covered the mindset of the first century and established a foundation for reading these maps. That's important, very crucial, because some don't understand this. Uh, it's not so hard to understand when our mindset fits that or at least understands and is capable of reconciling to the reality that we know will come to light in latter years. That's how we should read ancient geography. Duh. Uh, it took some time, but hypercritical. Now, to the person who came into comments saying, we have to go read some book by some illiterate scholar whom uh, uh, we've already disproven. And again, this is the first video of, well, what will be six. Uh, are you crazy? The, the funny thing is, supposedly, the book has archaeology that disproves that the Greeks sailed around Africa. What could you find that would do that? How stupid. I mean, that's the kind of trash that we deal with, and we're not reading that trash. However, they watched one part, or if that, uh, they likely, stupidly, just read the title and responded, yeah, that's the ticket. And they don't even know what we prove, or don't, because this is, and it looks again like about six videos, not one, the epitome of ignorance. We get it every time we do, especially a series, uh, even if it's, you know, two or three videos, they, they don't finish, they, they, they don't even watch the first one, and they come in and try to say, no, uh, well, you're a child. That's what you are when you do that. You are not academic, and you're certainly not very smart. Uh, it is, uh, as we say, condemnation without investigation is the epitome of ignorance. Uh, they didn't even watch one video, likely. Now, this is to be continued, and it will be on the heels of this one tomorrow, probably. Uh, we'll go through more maps uh, from the first century and break them down as well as their actual words as we did here. This will be awesome. By the end of those six videos, there will be nothing left to debate on this, especially in lieu of all the data that we've already piled up that leads to a conclusion no one can disprove. The Philippines is the ancient land of gold and the Garden of Eden, period. We will then go to Magellan and Columbus, who knew where Tarshish and Ophir were, and this will be incredible. Wait to see how we put that together. Finally, we'll end on Oceanus, the great worldwide river. No, not ocean. It's a giant river to the Greeks, yet far greater than any river on all of Earth. What could it possibly be? Be. Many of you already know because you've watched our Rivers from Eden series. You're going to find this will actually fit that. And this is going to be incredible. Really taking us back to 800 BC. Wow. This is awesome. Coming up. We have over 470 videos on this channel, one for every day of the year plus now. Uh, many just as profound with some 50 or so in Tagalog for Filipinos and now six in Spanish to start. We also have been setting up subtitles for 20 plus languages for most of our videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell for notifications of new uploads. Join our email list as YouTube fails to notify often. 
And we will notify you ourselves at thegodculture.com. Just fill in the pop-up there. We now have alternative platforms for videos on Rumble, Odyssey, and Utreon. And our new podcast is available for all of our videos pretty much as well. All links in the description box and friend us on Facebook at The God Culture Space hyphen Space Original. That is our only Facebook page, only one that we're checking and using. Uh, if you prefer an alternative, we now have Parlor and Gab links below. We have six books published internationally being read in over 100 countries. Uh, and actually, I correct that. It's now seven. How about that? Uh, with our new release, the first book of Bible History Illustrated, Enoch's Animal Dream Visions. We also have now launched Ophir Philippines Coffee Table Book in the U.S., Canada, U.K., and many overseas markets on Amazon. And it's available in hardcover or softcover there. Also, this uh, first book of Bible History Illustrated is available only in color. We're not even doing this in black and white. Only in color, and you can get it in color, uh, soft cover, or hard cover on Amazon. Uh, coming to the Philippines soon. Not yet. We're not there yet, but we will get there. Additionally, we launched the Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar, with color maps and interiors, as so many had requested that overseas. Uh, rightfully so. Uh, we already have that in the Philippines. Uh, the Philippine copies have color maps inside already. Uh, that too is available on Amazon in hardcover, softcover, both in color or in black and white softcover if you wish. Uh, all books including Solomon's Treasurer are now free in ebook. Uh, we're not going to do an ebook for this one because we have this video series animated and we're going to release one with all five uh, as one video as well so no need to do an ebook when we'll have the video animation and more coming soon thank you for watching now always remember prove all things for yourself Yah bless to everyone